Uh, welcome back to the channel, hope everybody's doing well and in today's video I'm taking another look at this UT505A insulation resistance multimeter from UNI-T with specific regard to the actual PIDAR and time functions on this instrument. I did a video on this uh, a number of years back, somebody has passed a comment on that video about using the time function as opposed to the pi and r and I said I'd take a look at it and see how it operates. Uh, at the moment we've got a DAR test going on you can see that the timer is more or less matching timer over there, we've got a light on there and we've got our indicator over there saying that we're testing. Now you can see the test is finished, we've gone past one minute which is a typical DAR uh, we've got 1.61 which is the actual DAR reading. Um, the design of our simulator here would be 1.62 so that pretty much marries up there, no problems. But if you take a look at the instrument you can see we've got a red light on there and you can see it's still flashing away and it's still applying power to the test subject. So the instrument doesn't appear to be switching off when you're in DAR mode. We'll just twizzle around a little bit and zoom in so you can see a bit more on that. So hopefully there you can see the light there and there. Um, so in order to get this to stop I have to hit test and then it stops and we are okay. Uh, we'll just take off the lead there and we'll apply our short so we can discharge our test box. So whilst that's discharging, um, if we look at the DAR function that we've got set up here, you can see DAR is at the top up there. We've got time one is 30 seconds, time two as one minute. So you can see I've got the ratio being displayed on the screen at the end of the test. To get to the actual values I hit the pi and dar button again and we're flashing away that's time 2 at the 1 minute so that's 4.28 mega ohms and we press it again and we go to time 1 which is the 30 seconds which is 2.65 and divided by them will give me the 1.61 for the actual dar value. So it kind of works, it gives me the information that I need. Um, it doesn't display the actual mega ohms reading whilst the test is ongoing, which I prefer. But of course we've got this issue that it doesn't switch off. As I say, I found this out four years ago when I tested the instrument and I'll leave a link to that video in the description box below. So I've just cleared everything. I'm going to look at setting the actual time function. Um, as with the Pi and R, I do need the lock function up there. And I can just press this time button here and you see we'll start to see the different times coming up on the display there and they pretty much follow the values that you would have if you were using the pi and r function. You see we've got 1 minute 15 there, there's the 1 minute 30 that you saw when the meter was set to dar. Now whereas that dar test is 1 minute only and it records the values at 30 seconds and 1 minute with the time function those two blocks being displayed will become additive. So this will actually be a 90 second test, which is not what I want for a DAR. I would actually need just a one minute test. So we can cycle through these, and then we'll go back and we will put one minute on there. So with it all set up, I'll just zoom back out again, and swizzle around so you can see everything. And you can see we've hooked back up to our test box. It's been discharged and we'll set these two off again and we can see what happens on this test. So you can see fundamental difference here is that I'm now getting the mega ohm values on the screen and I've not got a counter displaying the time. So you would actually have to manually time this which I'll try and record the 30 second reading and hopefully that should tie up with the automatic test. 2.68 mega ohms. So that will be our 30 seconds, which was 2.65 last time, so that's not too bad. And we'll see what happens when we hit the one minute. So you can see now I've gone past the one minute mark. I'll stop the external timer. Um, I've got 4.24 mega ohms and we were 4.28 last time. 
So my DAR value doing it this way, so that's 1.59, that's against uh, 1.61, we had with the auto test and 1.62 as the design value, so pretty much thereabouts, uh, comparable values there really. Um, but you can see the instrument hasn't actually calculated the dial ratio for us because we're just on a time function. However, it has switched the instrument off. There is no power light on there and the symbol up there has gone as well. We'll just zoom you in over there so you can see a bit more closely. There you can see the installation tester is turned off. So using the time function, it does appear to switch itself off, which is better. You just don't get the automatic recording of the installation values and the calculation of the dial ratio at the end of the test. You have to do that manually. I guess it's just down to which method of operation that you prefer. Um, doing it this way, just with the time function, as the viewer suggested, it's probably a little bit better for me because I would be able to record the installation values as we we're going through the test, especially for a polarization index test. Um, but the timing function of the Pi and the DART test is a little bit strange. I've not come across an instrument that doesn't switch off at the end of a Pi or DAR test. As I said earlier, this instrument is four-ish years old when I originally started looking at this. At that time, the UT505B was kind of rumoured to be there, but I couldn't actually get hold of it. Uh, but four years later on, the UT505B is actually available, and that would be my instrument of preference. It has a higher range of insulation res resistance values. That was a rude interruption, wasn't it? So I have ordered one of those, and when that arrives, we'll see if that operates in the same manner as this UT505A. And I'll also run the basic tests on this that I normally do on an insulation tester and see if there's any improved operation. So that will be the end of this video. Uh, many thanks to the viewer who commented about using the time function. It does switch the instrument off, so that's much better operation than using the Pi or DAR. And that's probably what I'd stick to when using this instrument. Uh, thanks everybody for watching. Hope you found it useful. And I'll see you again in the next video.